Yesterday, Young and I are in Las Vegas. We decided to take a day trip. We flew in in the morning. We flew, we're going to fly back tonight. Uh, basically, the reason we did the day trip is we didn't. Vegas is an interesting town. It started out many years ago when Ben Siegel came to this little podunk place and saw people gambling in the middle of the desert. Uh, by the way, his name, everybody knows him as Bugsy Siegel. He hates that name or he hated that name. Um, he was killed because his girlfriend stole so much money from the construction of the Flamingo Hotel that he was building at the time that the mob got angry at him and basically Get him in. Anyway, Vegas has grown since then. It's become bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, this morning we went to the Bacchanal Buffet at Caesars Palace. Now buffets are Las Vegas tradition. They started with the El Royale Hotel, or I'm sorry, the El Royale Vegas. Uh, they created their buffet called the, what was it called? It was called the Chuck Wagon. And uh, it was it was created because when the headliners were done for the night, Frank Sinatra, whoever was singing here, the high rollers would go home. And the guy who owned the El Royale wanted to keep the, the high, or I'm sorry, El Rancho Vegas, wanted to keep the high rollers playing. And so he created the chuck wagon. They're, we're standing obviously under a plane site, you know, and so we're going to be dealing with planes flying over while I'm talking, but that's life. Uh, so he created the chuck wagon to keep the high rollers there. It was kind of cheap food, but they had steaks and they had all kinds of stuff and people ate them. It caught on in Vegas and the places started having buffets all over the place. Uh, over time, the buffets kind of upgraded themselves in the 1980s when the idea of Vegas was no longer, we're gonna lure you in with cheap food and cheap rooms and you're gonna gamble. Instead, what wound up happening was they started charging for the food, charging for the rooms, and they would make money in the gambling. So buffets got a little bit better in quality. They got a little bit more expensive. Eventually, in the 90s, the buffets got really big. The Bellagio opened up their buffet, the Rio opened up its buffet, and Caesars Palace opened up a buffet. They were charging a lot more money. The quality of the food was a lot better. Today, Las Vegas is a town of buffets. We went to the Bacchanal Buffet, and uh, you're going to see another video when we did that. That's going to be fun. And today, tonight, we're here at Lotus of Siam. Lotus of Siam was opened in 2005. Young and I first went in about 2007, when it was a tiny little store in a strip mall. And uh, they thought Young was Thai, and so they gave her all the food Thai spicy. Now, Young can handle spicy but you can't handle Thai spicy. That was really spicy. And uh, so we now know to tell them to temper it a little bit because it is spicy. However, Lotus of Siam remains today one of the best buffets, I'm sorry, one of the best restaurants in the United States that's a Thai restaurant. And uh, if you want really good Thai food, this is the place to come. We're gonna come here tonight. As you can see, this place is incredibly popular. The restaurant just opened and there's a line of people to get in. Luckily, we have reservations. It was very difficult to get reservations. We actually tried making them about two weeks in advance and I had to call American Express Concierge in order to get them to do the reservations. But as you can see, the bar waiting area is quite big and there's quite a crowd there at the reservations table where they're calling people. Now Bob better get his seat quick or he may lose a seat. So we're in Lotus of Siam. We made it. We got our seat. We're in the back room here. Uh, one of the things I noticed about the menu, it's very interesting. They have uh, a lot of 
northern Thai dishes, which you don't see in a lot of Thai restaurants in the United States. They also have a lot of Isan dishes, and Isan is an area of northern Thailand where, unfortunately, a lot of the friendlier girls around uh, Thailand do tend to come from Isan. They're the younger girls. The families send them down there to uh, do whatever. Uh, you know, it's not it's not the most pleasant thing. But the Isan culture is very strong, very family oriented, and their food is just as spicy as what you're going to get in the south. And it's a fun thing to do. All right, we, the first two dishes we got it's a shredded beef papaya salad. And a beef papaya salad is a very standard Thai dish, but this is a little bit different because they're using a shredded dried beef here. And this has more of a northern flair to it than uh, your standard southern Thai beef and papaya salad. The second thing we got is fried baby back ribs. Now that's a specialty here and everybody raves about it. So where well, this is blue. I'm guessing this is some kind of rice. We'll see. Then you have shredded beef with it. And then also these things that look a little bit like bean sprouts or noodles. This is probably the papaya. Often you'll get shredded green papaya. This is just a shredded regular papaya. Okay, it's all here. Ready for one big bite, I think. Assuming I can actually get it all on the fork, we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna stab it. Mm. That has a lot of flavor to it. It has just a touch of spice. I feel a tingling on my tongue, but it's not so spicy that I'm going to sit here and go, oh my god, I need the water, I need the tea, give me some milk. I'm fine with it. This is a good spice level for me. Young can take things a lot spicier than I can. I, I'm about a five, and that works for me. Okay, now, the ribs. I'm not quite sure how we eat deep fried ribs because I'm assuming the ribs are still in here. Okay. Take the ribs, put a little chili sauce on them. I don't think there's any polite way to do this. You just pick it up and go for it. That's tender, you get the tenderness of the rib. It's, uh, the sauce is more sour than spicy, it's like a vinegar sauce. Um, it's good, but there's no, no real spice to it at all. It's still, it's got a nice flavor. It's very rich to eat. Mm. What'd you have for dinner last night, Steve? I had deep fried ribs. You got something with that? Pad Thai, everyone thinks of as a traditional Thai dish. Pad Thai is not really a traditional Thai dish. It was invented in around 1950 or so, the mid 20th century. It was at a time when Thailand was just starting to engage in nation building. It was changing its name from Siam to Thailand. It was trying to attract tourists and it wanted to create a dish that was much more like a Chinese style dish that tourists were used to. So they created this pad thai using the rice noodles. They put tamarind in it. Here I've got chicken in it, bean sprouts, uh, carrots, and various vegetables. It's now one of the most popular dishes in and out of Thailand, but originally it's not. Another story about Pad Thai is they believe that it might have been invented at a time there was a rice shortage. So the king of Thailand tried to encourage everybody to eat noodles instead of rice and they created Pad Thai for that reason. There we go. This is drunken noodles with soft shell crab. I will leave the spoon in here so you can eat it later. Um, it's got 
got a heavy basil flavor. Um, I'm tasting the spice now. When you first taste it, you don't taste the spice. Now the back of my throat is starting to burn. It's not my favorite sensation, but it's not bad. I can tolerate this. This isn't too bad. I can taste it does have palm sugar in it. The noodles are the wide, flat noodles that you see in things like Pad CU and Drunken Noodles. Um, and the soft shell crab is really fresh. It's crab season right now, so that works out really well. It's delicious. Every time we go to a Thai restaurant, Young orders the hot sauce or, or the plate with hot peppers and hot sauces. She really likes that because, of course, Thai food isn't spicy enough. She needs more. Uh, I couldn't handle any of this on my descriptive of the hot sauces that Young ordered. This is Thai chili peppers, green and red, chopped up. It's got some onions in it. It's pickled in vinegar. And uh, that's actually quite spicy. Then here, everybody knows, this is your standard sriracha sauce. Here you've got ground up dried chilies. And then here you've got pickled jalapenos in vinegar. And uh, you put it all on the plate and it'll probably catch fire. Okay, so we had a very nice meal at Lotus of Siam, one of our favorite Thai restaurants in the entire country. It wrapped up a very pleasant food day in Las Vegas. We had a good time, we did a little shopping, we did a lot of eating and uh, we're doing it.